What we see here is with all of these approaches, the adoption, the twins separated at birth, the twins mono versus dizygotic, et cetera, et cetera, all of those were predicated on one simple assumption, which is environment begins at birth. And that has been completely destroyed in some incredibly interesting ways in recent years. We have very vibrant literature at this point. First way that it can go down, which is your prenatal environment. What are you having as a prenatal environment? Who are you sharing environment with? Obviously, with your mother. You are sharing blood. You are sharing blood, and thus the things that she is experiencing in the world around her that make for a different environment than the person standing next to her gets translated into effects on the fetus. First domain, hormonal ones. Here's one example of something that you will wind up seeing. This was done, work done by a guy named Fred Von Saal at University of uh, Missouri. And what he did was look at the fact that rats give birth to litters of about a dozen kids at a time. And there's some circulatory system thing. They look like a whole necklace of fetuses there. And a circulatory system is such that everybody's getting blood, but you're getting preferentially the blood that is from the siblings right around you. There's some sort of looping thing that occurs with the blood system that looks just like that. And what you wind up getting is you have a particularly shared blood environment with the siblings on either side of you. And what he asked was something very simple. You are a female rat fetus, and in one case, you're sitting there with brothers on each side. In another case, one brother and one sister, or in the final case, obviously with two sisters on either side. And what you wind up getting is a different hormonal environment. How does that translate out later? The more male siblings you have around you as a fetus, the later you're going to reach puberty. That's interesting, suggesting that very local endocrine effects here play out in something like that. Also, it predicts how estrogen levels are going to drop in you later in life. So this winds up being one very interesting prenatal environment. Here's another one. Here we have in humans uh, the age of one's mother when she gave birth and extrapolating a little bit here at both ends, but just assume this is kind of the age range. And what we see here is the age of puberty onset in the offspring. And what is seen is very young mothers and very old mothers have offspring who reach puberty later than women in a more intermediate age. What does that appear to be due to? differing estrogen levels. Higher levels of estrogen at this point in life, it's actually not symmetrical, it's skewed a little bit this way, and that seems to be the driving force on it. Whoa, the age at which you reach puberty has to do with how old the fetus, the fetal sac was that you hung out for nine months. That has an influence, absolutely. So prenatal effects. More, another version of it. Suppose now the hormone you are getting inundated with through the bloodstream is a stress hormone. A stress hormone, glucocorticoids, we will learn all about those down the line. A stress hormone because mom is stressed. What are some of the consequences? For the same prenatal stress, as an adult, you will have a smaller brain. If you're a rat, you will have a thinner cortex. You will have less learning abilities. You will be more prone towards anxiety. You will have fewer of those benzodiazepine receptors that we heard about at the other day. You will have more of a cognitive decline when you are a doddering old rat. All sorts of stuff will go differently throughout your entire life. But get this. Okay, look at this mechanism. So you are a rat and your mother was stressed when you were a fetus back when and you were marinated in those glucocorticoids when you were a fetus. Your brain overall will be smaller. There's one particular brain region, which I won't mention right now because it's not really critical. There's one brain region that's particularly hard hit. What does that brain region do, among other things? It helps to turn off the stress response. So if that part of the brain is smaller, you're not as good at blocking glucocorticoid secretion at the end of stress. 
and somebody with a normal sized whatever, something stressful occurs and they recover, and you do this instead. Because this mysterious part of the brain is smaller, is not giving as much of a negative feedback signal. And for people new to endocrinology, that's something you'll be getting in a couple of weeks. The net result is, if this part of the brain is smaller, you will have more lifetime exposure to glucocorticoids. So what happens next? What happens next? In addition, baseline is also elevated in these individuals. So the net result is a lot more cumulative exposure. So you are a female rat, and you were in a mother who was stressed prenatally when you were a fetus. And as a result, in addition to all the other problems that you've got lifelong, you secrete higher than expected glucocorticoid levels. And eventually, you get pregnant. And thus, your fetus is going to be exposed to elevated glucocorticoid levels and will be born with a somewhat smaller brain, thinner cortex, et cetera, et cetera. What have we just shown? An environmental manipulation on a pregnant female manifesting itself two generations later in the grandchildren. And when this was first described in the early 60s, this was called the grandmother effect. And eventually, it was shown to go out about four or five generations. The magnitude of the effect would get smaller with each generation before it disappeared. But look at what this is about. This is inheriting a trait that is not genetic. And this wound up being the first example of what is now called non-Mendelian inheritance of traits, non-genetic inheritance of traits. And all you've got going here is prenatal environment, extremely powerful observation. And what you also then have is you're some researcher, and again, you come along one second after the animal is born, and you wind up studying, saying, oh, look at this. This rat tends to have elevated glucocorticoid levels, just like mom. And this rat tends to have a thinner cortex, just like mom. And this rat, and if you've never heard of prenatal environmental effects, what's the only conclusion you could make? There are genetic influences on these traits. So these non-Mendelian, non-genetic transmission of traits are really, really important.